All right, Bloomfield Middle School and those watching in our community, thank you for joining us virtually for our community meeting. It is February 8th, 2021, and we are excited to be back with you today. We've got our blue students in person with us. And today, as of every day, we're thinking about what does it take to be BMS strong? How can, we be, how can we be kind to ourselves and how can we be kind to others? And so this week, I hope that you feel empowered to do that as we interact with each other. And I want to talk about our schedule to make sure that everybody is aware of how we're going to be operating today and tomorrow. We are blue. Students are in person. Wednesday, February 10th, we are 100 percent virtual. And Thursday and Friday, we have our red students in person. I know there's some chatter, guys, about weather that may be moving in. Uh, later this week and all that you know is uh when you get a weather report you can get really excited and get anxious about what may happen but it's all speculative right now and we'll wait and see how that plays out so could be affected but hopefully we'll be in here all all uh, four days with students in person this week and we'll see we'll see how it plays out but no matter what we'll continue to focus on learning and growing stronger this week um is very important to talk about february and being Black History Month. Now, we planned to talk about this last week, uh, but the reality is that we were not here because of weather. And so we, we did not have our normal community meeting as we had planned to. And with, with February being Black History Month, it is so important for us to uh, take time and reflect on the contributions of Black Americans and Blacks across the world who have changed the world and done amazing things. And so this month, Teachers in different classrooms are, are having these conversations with students and recognizing that. And I want to bring up uh, a name that, honestly, until recently, I was pretty unfamiliar with. Have any of you heard of the name Wentworth Cheswell? Wentworth Cheswell. I can imagine maybe some social studies teachers are going, I know. Uh, but I was driving and on the radio, I heard this story and it was just kind of it blew my mind that I didn't know this. But we are all familiar with Paul Revere. And if you're not, you will be soon. Your teachers will, will teach you about this. But Paul Revere is famously known for writing to warn folks that the British were coming. You know, all the events in the, in the, that led up to the Revolutionary War that played out that uh, your teachers will give you the specifics on. Paul Revere is known for writing and warning people. On December 13th, 1774, Paul Revere rode one direction and Wentworth Cheswell, an African-American man, rode another direction. And while history has remembered Paul Revere, we've not focused on the contributions of this other man who is vital and important to the history of our country. Not only did, was Wentworth involved in this action in our history, but he was a justice of the peace, uh, a Revolutionary War veteran, and according to George Mason University, he was the first African-American elected to public office in the history of the United States. Pretty amazing, and it's a, it's a shame that I was not more familiar with that. And so this whole month, okay, we are focused on those stories from our history and our path. You know, while Black History Month is important, there, there's, we want to make sure that we're always remembering the contributions of, of everyone throughout the entire year because there's not black history, there's not white history, there's just our history that we learn from and we grow from. But this month, we're taking that extra effort to remember those contributions. And so thank you teachers and students for engaging in those conversations. Now, with that said, let's talk about Care and Connect focus for this week. Last week, we kind of laid some foundation with you all reviewing some passion projects from fellow students. And students, thank you for those that shared and saw those. Miss Styles is going to be joining us a little bit later to discuss where we're going next in our Care and Connect focus and how you're going to continue working on that gift project showcase. But at this time, I would like to welcome up our esteemed assistant principal, Mr. Patterson, to bring us our activities report. All right. Good morning, guys, and uh, happy Monday to you. As you take a look at our, our schedule for the week, we're right in between boys basketball and girls volleyball, so we don't have any games or anything like that going on, but just a couple of announcements. Uh, volleyball be games will be starting next week, and then also, or two weeks from now, but also we have uh, 
baseball and softball. If you're interested in those, uh, as we know, Coach Holt will be here today for anybody interested in playing baseball to get you signed up. If you're virtual and you didn't see him on on Friday or you are uh, virtual, virtual all the time and you haven't seen him, please make sure you get a hold of the office and let us know that you're interested in playing baseball and we'll get you signed up for that. And if you're interested in, in softball, then uh, more information is coming to on that soon. Make sure you've got your sports physicals ready so you're ready to go and hit the field as soon as uh, that time comes. I want to now to um, uh, recognize a couple students in our student spotlight. Um, and these students come from our academic team and future problem solvers. They competed in the KAAC Regional Governors Cup competition last week. And we've got two individuals who have uh, really represented uh, Bloomfield well, along with the whole team. But I want to recognize these two. Uh, one would be Jacob Willett. And Jacob Willett placed second out of 20 competitors on the mathematics test. So uh, let's give it up for Jacob and a job well done on the mathematics test. We also have Julian Ramirez, and he placed second out of 16 competitors in a written competition. So again, uh, placing second in both of those competitions and really, uh, really representing BMS and uh, BMS Strong. Uh, they both will move on to our state competition that will be held in March. So we want to wish them luck and uh, the best to them as they compete and represent BMS and themselves in that state competition. Uh, lastly, I want to just our, our school operating procedures report. Uh, right now, we're just making sure, guys, have that mask on, have that mask on above our nose, our nose hanging out. Uh, and I think I heard that somebody called that a snorter the other day, so we'll make sure we get it all our mask worn properly. And um, appreciate you persevering and really being BMS strong through that and wearing those masks so that we can all remain healthy and remain here in school and hopefully get back in person all together again really soon. So with that, I want to see, ask Miss Victoria Styles to come up for her segment of Why Am I BMS Strong? Good morning, guys. So last week we had some time looking through some exemplars of a passion project which were completed through the BMS Strong class. And so this week, we are gonna continue that work through truly identifying our passion and starting to build a plan towards our passion project. So we're gonna be doing that within Care and Connect this week, but we wanna highlight two students who you've also seen last week and their extraordinary work on their passion projects. So first off, we have Caden Stone. So we're going to show his video really quick. Uh, hello, I'm Caden. I'm going to present my passion project. Uh, I chose music uh, as my passion project. Uh, I always like I always liked music. It's easy to express things out of if you have like a ton of emotion towards something. You can just get it out, you know. a uh, passion project I chose like I did like a nice melody I, I do wait. enjoy a like catchy melody that will be stuck in someone's head all day why I chose music music's a simple way to take out everything uh, and put it all together as I said yeah it helps with emotion and everything for teenagers we're growing up we are all confused and everything about everything so you know it's healthy to have an outcome for some uh, outcome for everything. It gives me an amazing feeling whenever I'm playing it. I feel like a whole like rush of blood just go through me, and I'm pumping and everything. Yeah, it's amazing how it can really you can feel emotion flow through you. Next time that you listen to your song, to your like favorite songs, read into the lyrics. You'll gain a feel for the song, and you'll understand it more, and you might like the song a little bit more. I don't know why you should choose music. I'm not here to convince anybody or tell anybody that they're passion's wrong or anything i'm saying maybe choose this as a small route you know whenever you're feeling some kind of emotion that you want to take out take it out in a healthy way uh, here's the link to it uh... how incredible is that his passion for music it really sh shined through for his passion project and so we also want to take a look at another student 
who did an excellent job with her passion project through the creation of a story along with her piano playing. So we want to showcase Alexandra Hassel. Hi, for my passion project, I wrote a fictional story about Beethoven. I wanted to do this project because I had plenty of Moonlight Sonata on my wish list for a really long time. And last year when school ended due to the pandemic, I started learning how to play it. I wrote a fictional story about someone going back in time interviewing Beethoven. Clary and I walked to my room, both of us carefully holding the typewriter. It was super heavy. When we finally got it on my desk, we kept hitting random keys until it worked, Clary suggested. Um, okay. For some reason, don't ask why, you'll see later. I typed in July 9th, 1808, Vienna. All of a sudden, it started ticking like a clock. Hi, I'm playing the Moonlight Sonata around a minute of each movement. The first movement is called Ariego Sustinuto. <laughs> So let's take a moment just to celebrate Caden Stone and Alexandra Hassel for their work on their passion project. So over this next week, be thinking about what it is you're going to create for your passion project. And then later on this month, we're going to get into public speaking and presenting skills. So right now we're just focusing on what we're creating. Now, I want to talk about our horrible birthday choir. So, we have a new link and a new code for our February birthdays. If you didn't have the chance to audition last month, well, now's your chance to audition again this month. So, come join in the fun, scan that code, and make sure that you try out for the horrible birthday choir. I'm going to pass it off back to Mr. Adams. We'll leave that on the screen there for just a little bit longer for students that are wanting to get that code, wanting to get that Flipgrid URL for the Horrible Birthday Choir. Now again, you can only be a part of this if you sing really horribly, right? We don't want to see the amazing talent that we just saw from Alexandra and Caden, right? That was, a, that was fantastic. I'm blown away at how much passion. When Caden talked about the blood pumping to his brain when he's playing music, I felt that playing music. So. To, it's just pretty cool to think that students are finding things that they're so excited about and those passions that are going to be driving um, them the rest of their lives, maybe. So something else that's really exciting is we have another showcase of a community project. And now that we've got kids back in school for a while, we're getting some traction. And I've heard that our FFA members are, are working on a blanket drive for the Nelson County and the Kentucky Humane Society. And here to share some more information about that is a, is a video that we're gonna show you uh, on these students' work. Hi, my name is Emily Sanders. And my name is Scarlett Ann Williams, and we're a part of the Bloomfield Middle School FFA chapter. We will be hosting a blanket drive the 15th through the 19th, and we'll be asking for gently used or new towels and blankets. These new towels or gently used blankets will be donated to the Kentucky Humane Society in Nelson County, and there will be a basket in the front foyer and in Miss Cybert's room. We appreciate any donations. Thank you. So... Those students are asking for your help and support uh, for the BMS FFA Blanket Drive. You can donate new or gently used towels and blankets for the Kentucky Humane Society of Nelson County. So February 15th through the 19th, if you're blue or red days, just make sure that you get those in here. And there's gonna be some donation boxes where you can drop those off. If you're virtual and you wanna participate, you can have your parents swing by the loop and drop that off so you can participate as well. But thank you for making a difference to our FFA chapter. I'm so excited that we've had agriculture here at our school for the last two years. Next, we have Mr. Mahoney, one of everybody's favorites, coming up for Counselor's Corner to share with us some great information. Woo! 
Well, hello, 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 BMS. It's the lovable Mr. Mahoney here wearing my bright purple. First of all, I have to brag on our student energy team. I have two of the folks running behind the camera. They're running every bit of the slideshow, changing films, uh, changing slides. They are doing everything. I'm very, very proud of them. So, Counselor's Corners, parent, parents out there watching live via our Facebook page, remember, Infinite Campus is the official record for your child's grades. Missing assignments, what they their final grade is or what grade they got on the assignment. Download that Infinite Campus app and set the alerts to your phone so you get instant notification. Google Classroom is a platform our teachers use to deliver their instructions. But Infinite Campus is the place to go for missing assignments, final grades, et cetera. And parents, if you do not have that right now, call Miss LaDonna in her office. I'm sorry, Miss LaDonna, I love you. Uh, and she will help you get this set up so that way you guys are good to go with Infinite Campus. Secondly, to our students, some of you tricky, crafty students out there are removing yourself from Google Classroom. Well, guess what me and good old Mr. Patterson discovered? When you remove yourself from Google Classrooms, all those assignments are still stored on your teacher's drive. That's right. So, not being accusatory, but let's say if I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I got five missing assignments. I'll remove myself from this Google Classroom and I can say it deleted it all. It doesn't work. So teachers, look in your drive under Classroom and all your Google Classrooms you've ever created. All the assignments are stored there. And guess what, students? They're stored on your drive as well. So if you're accidentally removing yourself from Google Classroom, we have found out it stores everything. Up next, we're here for the BMS fun segment. So trade that slide there. And two other members of our student, student energy team traveled the hallways to find out this or that. And we're here to find out this or that 8th grade teacher version. I'm 8th grade ELA, Ms. Harris. I'm Ms. Downey, 8th grade social studies. Hey, I'm Ms. Sue, 8th grade science. I'm Ms. Messer, 8th grade. In person school. In person. In person school. In person school. In person school. In person school. Spaghetti or pizza? Pizza. Spaghetti or pizza? Pizza. Spaghetti or pizza? Spaghetti or pizza? Pizza. Sweet. Sweet or sour? Sour. Sweet or sour? Sweet or sour? FaceTime or texting? Texting. FaceTime or texting? Neither. <laughs> FaceTime or texting? FaceTime or texting? Ice cream or cake? Both. Ice cream or cake? Pie. Ice cream or cake? Ice cream or cake? Gap or country? Both. Gap or country? Country. Gap or country? Gap or country? Country. Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts? Oh! Starbucks. Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts? McDonald's. Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts? Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts? All right, we have some honorary teachers, okay? Now you can all see Miss Nally. That's not the, how the game works. It's this or that. You're changing the rules. What are you doing? All right, y'all see what we're dealing with here? We still love all of you. 
you know what, this or that, my favorite version is, are you going to show character or not? And the correct answer is always, you're going to show character. And we have some students here for our, my favorite segment, the character call out, and I'm so pumped. And guess what? Not only do these students get to sign the character call out guitar, which is a symbol of when you make music, all these different elements come together to make harmony, character creates harmony in our world and our school. We also have brand new BMS Strong pins. Look at this. That is a gem. And our students are getting to take these home. And so if we've had a student who's done character call out in the past, I will be in the hallway, I think in the seventh grade hallway, after community meeting with my box of pins. If you are a verified and validated character call out winner, you will also get a pin, so come see me. But let's recognize these students. If they're here or not today, we hope they're all here. We have first Landon Edlin, who is a sixth grader nominated by Mr. Metcalf. And Mr. Metcalf had this to say. He goes out of his way to do extraordinary things in class. His interest in the topics I presented was energizing, and he was all, he always came to class with an open mind. You know, whenever you all are excited about a lesson, it energizes teachers, too. So I think that's a really great thing that, that he celebrated there. He even got involved outside the class by building a ramp for our Sphero robots to use. He, without a doubt, represents what it means to be BMS strong. So there's the marker. You're going to sign that. Might be Mr. Patterson to help hold that guitar for us, please. But you represent BMS Strong. Thank you, Mr. Metcalf, for nominating Landon. Next, we have Landon Hamilton, a sixth grader nominated by Mr. Mahoney. And Mr. Mahoney said this, when leaving lunch, he noticed a mess on the floor at the trash can. Someone dropped some chips by accident. Landon took it upon himself to ask permission to use the broom and clean up the mess. This small action helped our school, our high school workers, uh, who work in the lunchroom, and it demonstrated what it means to be BMS Strong, taking pride in our school. So here's your pins as well. I don't want to forget to give you your pin. This is like it being knighted, right? You know, pretty cool. And finally, we have Dakota Greenwell, who's a sixth grader. And Dakota may not be in here with us, but I'm going to recognize him. Dakota was recognized, recognized by Miss Emily Newton. She said that he saw a student drop something in the hallway, and he picked it up and took it to him. Several students walked past it. But Dakota did not. You know, we, we, sometimes we underestimate how important those type of things are, how embarrassing it is to drop your stuff in the hallway. When you're in middle school, you're like, oh, it's, a, you know, my stuff is scattered on the floor. Sometimes we're more tempted to kind of, you know, make fun of that person. The reality is when you stop and help somebody, that is showcasing character. And you all are deserving of a character call out. Let's give them a round of applause from our building out in our community. All right. Put that pin to good yes, use in your classrooms. It's time to As we are sanitizing, I just want to wrap up today with our pledge. We think about as we pledge allegiance to our country and we, we stand united with one another. That's what Bloomfield is all about, being united in our purpose of growing stronger. So please stand, place your hand over your heart. And our flag is going to be there on our screen. And this, when I look at that, I think about, you know, Super Bowl was on last night. And, you know, we uh, a lot of people came together in their homes to to watch and celebrate an event. Think about what unites us and what brings us together. And let's keep that in our mind as we said the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have a great day. BMS strong. We love you and we're proud of you.